Hey developers, today we're looking at Vue Apollo, which is a way to integrate GraphQL into your Vue.js apps. There's actually a lot to this library. I want to show you guys how to get started on it. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. And if you like these types of videos, make sure you click that like button and subscribe button. That really helps me. So let's begin. Oh yeah, and before we get too far, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also a big Vue.js fan. And if you guys like Vue.js, I'm just gonna have a quick shout out. I'm creating a new course called Vue 360. I'll uh, put this link in the description below. It's viewcourse.tech. Make sure you put your email address in there and I'll let you know when I have this course out. It's gonna be a really comprehensive course. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, but check that out at viewcourse.tech. All right, so the first thing to do when we are integrating GraphQL into our Vue app is obviously to have a GraphQL server. And so I went ahead and set one up it's just a really basic one. You can see here, we're gonna use this dogs one right here and grab back you know, an ID and a name. And if you don't know what this is right here, this is the GraphQL playground. So this is an endpoint I already set up for GraphQL. Now in this tutorial, we're not gonna go over how to create a GraphQL endpoint. However, if you want to create your own and you're not sure, there's like a Prisma service that makes this really easy. I'm using Prisma for this one. It's like an online service, but there's also a few out there um, that you can run locally. Uh, obviously you can roll your own node server. If you use the Vue plugin for Apollo, it actually comes with a server. Now we're not gonna use that server, but it does come with one. So let's, let's kind of go through the official documentation and I'll walk you through how this works. So in the Vue Apollo, it says, you can install Vue Apollo, go to the installation. And it really, the, the recommended way to do this, and this is if you're using Vue CLI 3 or greater, is to use the Vue Add Apollo. If you already have an existing project, you can run these manual installation steps, but it takes a lot longer. You have to install all these libraries. Then you have to create this whole Apollo client, and you create this uh, instance, and the plugins, and a provider and so on and so forth, but we won't do that. So first we wanna create a view app, and of course that's a view, create, and then the app name. I went ahead and already did that to speed up this video. You can see right here, I have this view Apollo example app. And to, a, to continue on, what we need to do is actually install the view Apollo plugin. So view add Apollo. So I'll type in view add Apollo, now let me show you the questions that you'll get during this. So it's gonna install a few dependencies and it's gonna ask us a few questions. This will just take a moment. Okay, so the first question it's gonna ask you is do we wanna add some example code? And I actually did a tutorial on this a while back and on this channel and I installed the example code that time but this time I don't wanna install the example code so we're gonna say no here. And we're not gonna create our own GraphQL API server because we already have one. But I recommend if you're learning GraphQL for the first time, you might wanna hit yes here. It'll add a whole GraphQL server and then you can just run one command. I think it's npm run Apollo and it'll go ahead and start the GraphQL server. But we're gonna try something a little bit different and keep it a little simple. So we're gonna sit and hit uh, no here. And we're not using, we're not gonna configure any Apollo engine. We're not using that. Okay, so what happened here? <laughs> This, go, this will go ahead and install everything, but we actually had already run this once, so it's just giving us error that provider has already been declared. But if you're following along at home, then it'll just go ahead and create everything, and you won't get this error that I just got. So let's take a look at what it has. So it, uh, I went ahead, and this is obviously the app, and it adds a few files. It adds this view uh, Apollo config file right here which has uh, some of the configuration for it and you don't really need to really touch this. It also adds inside your main JS file, it adds this create provider from view-apollo and this creates the provider and does everything for you. And the only thing you really need to do is click on the view Apollo here and there's going to be this view GraphQL WS and this view GraphQL HTTP. And what you need to do is copy and paste the endpoint for your GraphQL server, the HTTP endpoint, which I had already done this right before we started this video, and this one right here, this Prisma one. So all you need to do is really just copy and paste those two in there, 
and you should be all there. Well, it should be all set and make sure obviously there are different URLs, one for the web sockets and one for the view uh, app GraphQL HTTP endpoint. Cool, so now that since they're both in here, we should be able to run npm run serve, and that will run uh, our server. And what I did, one other change I did is I just changed it to port 4204, just because I don't like it running on 8080. And this will just take a moment and it'll get set up. And while it's getting set up there, just one other thing, I went in and I just cleaned up our hello world. I just deleted everything out of it. And so there's just really nothing listed. And I think that's a little bit cleaner. Let's see what it looks like here in a second. Cool. All right. So it's running on 4204. So if we just refresh it, you see here there's nothing there. There's no errors in the console. So we have just an empty, empty project. And we just have the home and about page. We haven't really done anything. So we're going to use the hell world template and actually do something here. Now, if you look at the official documentation, after you add it, it says you can skip to this basic usage. And you're going to use this Apollo, this new Apollo property. And this is where we can actually write our GraphQL queries. Now there's two ways to do this. I would recommend if you're just learning and you're adding Apollo and, and GraphQL to your project, use this Apollo uh, property. However, there is an actual Apollo query component which you'll have available too. But let's start with this Apollo query. So it's pretty easy. And also you have access to this.apollo2. So we can add Apollo. We can add Apollo here. So I'm going to minimize this, make it a little smaller. And we're going to take the hello world component. We're not going to mess around with it too much. We deleted everything out of it. So now we have our Apollo, empty Apollo. And now we can add in a query. And to do that, we need to import in gql from and I'll double check where it is this is this graphql tag and essentially what we're doing here here I'll just import it that way is this gql is the graphql query language and this graphql tag was installed by the view plugin add-in when we installed it and now we can use it in our app. So what we have to do is, is give it a name. And to know how to create these queries, I would recommend go to the playground and just write one. So here's our query right here. We know it's returning three different dogs. And we should be able to just, uh, just use this one. So we know it's going to return dogs in a name. So I'm going to call this here dogs. And the way you write queries is you have to actually put GQL and then a backtick and then the query. So I'm going to copy and paste this just so I can use this as a template. And instead, I'm going to call it dogs. And we know the query is actually called, if we look right here, dogs, dogs, and ID and name. Is the two things we're getting out of it? ID, which I'll have to put right there, and name, and we'll save it. Cool. So now we have this new dogs query that should return back an ID and name, and now we can do something with it. So I'm going to create a new div tag. We're going to create a div here, v-4 dogs in. Actually, do dogs, dog in dogs, and we'll have to add a key which will be dog.id. And let's see if we can grab the dog.name out of it. So if we did everything correctly, this should work. Oops, we have one issue here. We're just going to take this colon out of here, make sure this is in dogs, and we'll refresh it. Cool. All right, now we have our three dog names right here. Awesome. Uh, we can also do mutations. So we can do a mutation here and uh, mutate things if we wanted to, and we can pass new variables in. But let's see if we can try to add a name. So I'm going to put an input here. I'm going to put a V model equals dog name. And we're going to add a data object. 
And it's going to return an object called dog name. Oops, I don't know, type string. Actually, we'll have default it to nothing. And so now we have a, let's see here. Okay, cool. We have an empty input here with nothing in here. But let's say we wanted to actually mutate it and add a name on enter. Oh, we can add a button. We can either add a button here. I don't know. We'll have a click handler on clicked. Press me. And let's add a methods object and on clicked. And we'll just console log. Let's see. This dot dog name. And we'll make sure we close it here. Oops. OK, that seemed to be it. So if I put something in here and press me, it says undefined. So this dot dog name, oops, got to put a capital here. There we go. Test. All right, so now we see test at the bottom. So it's definitely doing that. Now what we can do is we can do a mutation and we could do that by adding an add uh, some sort of um, async function that does the everything for us. So we're going to just copy and paste this result right here and I'll show you how it works. So instead of just doing this console log, click here and make this async and now we're going to have a result, and that's going to be right here. I'll save it. But we don't want to do this mutation. We actually want to do something else with it. We're going to change this dot new tag to we're looking at data from dog name. And we're going to look back here, and we're going to look. I created already a mutation here. We just do create dog, and you send the data. And, and then we return back a name. So like I created a dog named Bob. So let's see if we can do something similar here. So we have a mutation. Okay, so instead of having this add tag here, I'm gonna delete it. And we're just gonna copy and paste this create dog instead. And that's gonna have a data, but this label right here is going to be the label. So this will be dollar sign label. We'll save it and we'll see if this uh, works. Um, so we can just delete that for now. We don't need to find the result and we'll make sure it saves. There we go. Okay, we don't have any errors. So let's see if we make a dog named uh, Timmy. Timmy the dog. Hit press me. Doesn't seem like anything happened. But if you look at the playground here and look at the dogs and play, cool, now we have a new dog named Timmy. And if we refresh the page here, cool, now Timmy's a new dog. Now you can, there is ways of having it automatically update the list every time you add one. Um, what you have to do though, there is, if you look at the query section, there is a way to, uh, not the query section, the mutation section, there's a way to have them um, update the, the cache with the results. But I'm not going to look at that right now. It looks like there's a, you have to do you have to use this update function and then ch push the tags and then write the query. But for now, this is fine. It just updated it. I just had to refresh, so it looks fine. Uh, the last thing I want to show you guys is to see uh, what it would look like using the Apollo query instead of using this this uh, Apollo property. And to do that, then we would need to come back here. And we can go down all the way to the official documentation of this Apollo query. And we can just copy and paste something in here. So I'm going to come back up here and create a new section. Um, and I'm going to copy, I'm going to just, for now, just going to make sure everything is commented out. I'm back to nothing. And I'm going to go into this Apollo query and try this out. So this is the Apollo query. And I'm going to copy and paste it. And this time you can, you just do 
of this colon query, use the Apollo query here, and now you can use GQL, but you do have to actually put the right query. So we had this query for uh, this query right here for dogs, and it was query dogs ID name. So let's see if we can do something similar. So we don't need to pass in any strings, although we certainly could. And we're not going to carry about the hello right there. So we can do a query for dogs. And then the dogs query, we'll call it dogs. And then in this dogs query, we do the query, which we know is, if you look right here, uh, it's dogs ID name. So we just copy and paste that right in there. Oops. Uh, let's just try to do it like this, dogs. And then name and name and ID. So once you have this to actually display it, there is one other thing you need to do. And you have this big template for a V slot with loading error and data. So right underneath Apollo query, I can put this big thing right here, which will uh, associate the loading aider error and data. Oops, you actually have to put it inside the query. So I'll put it right here and see what happens. Cool, it says no result, but that's because this query is wrong. So I probably need to do something like this. Cool, so there it is. So now I have a full query of all the information. And then now I can from here, and don't mind this error here, I can do a couple things. So I have this template, it has this vslot calling loading error and data. So while it's loading, it shows loading, it shows an error, it shows error, and then if there's no result, it shows no result. But I can, now I have this data.dogs right here. So I can do the same thing I did before with a div tag, I can do a v4 dogs equal dogs, dog in dogs. And then of course I always put a key with the dog with the ID. And now I can do dog.name. And actually this has to be data.dogs. And this will have to be brackets like this. And if I do that, now here's all three of them listed. Oh, and it's, oh, there's one more error here. It says property method name is not defined in instance. That's because I have this variable's name here and I didn't use it. So if I save that, refresh it, cool. There's no more errors. And by the way, you saw there for a second, it showed no results and then it loaded because it now has this loading thing in here. Cool, uh, by the way, this is just an ESLint error. There's no issue there. And also one other thing um, you could do if you get any messages about data.dogs not being there, you can actually add VLCF data and data.dogs to make sure it's there. All right, so uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna show you guys today. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment below, thanks.